So with larger data sets, so beyond the small to moderate, um, then there are a couple things that you can do uh, when reading in tabular data that will make your life your life a lot easier, and also, and, and more importantly, will prevent R from totally choking. So uh, first, you should read the help page for read.table. Um, you should, in fact, you should probably have it memorized. There's a lot of key hints in that help page and a lot of useful information. And, and in my opinion, not enough people read this help page carefully enough so that they can kind of recite it in their sleep. Um, and, the, and so there's a lot of, so if once you've read that, you'll see there's a lot of important information for kind of how to optimize read.table, in particular for large data sets. And so one of the things you're going to want to do is, is to make a very rough calculation of how much memory um, you need to store the data set you're about to read. Um, and so in that way you can get a sense of, well, is there enough memory on my computer to store this data set? Because if you recall correctly, uh, R will have to, R is going to store your entire data set in memory unless you do otherwise. So when you call read.table or read.csv, it's reading your entire data set into the RAM of the computer. Um, and so you need to know, roughly speaking, how much RAM this data set is going to require. Uh, and we'll talk about how to calculate that in a second. So another optim easy optimization you can say is um, if there's no comment lines in your file, then just set the comment char to be the comment dot char argument to be blank. So just an, an empty quote there. Uh, the call classes argument is actually very important uh, because when if you don't specify it, then what R does def by default is it goes through every column of your data set and tries to figure out what type of data it is. Now, that's all fine, well and fine when the data set is small to moderate, but reading each of these columns and trying to figure out what type of data it is takes time, it takes memory, and can generally slow things down. If you can tell R what type of data is in each column, then R doesn't have to spend the time to figure it out on its own. Uh, and so it'll, it, it'll generally make read.table run a lot faster. Uh, and so you can save yourself a lot of time. So if you, if, if you have a few columns in your data set, then, uh, then you can usually just say what the, what the classes are, but if you have, um, if for, or if they're all the same, then you can. So, for example, if all the columns are numeric, you can just say you can just set call classes equal to numeric. And if you only send, you give it a, spit, a, a single value, it will just assume that every column has that same value. So, if, every, if you just say numeric, it will assume that every column is numeric. Uh, otherwise, what you can do if you have a huge data set, you can read in maybe the first hundred or the first thousand rows. Um, by specifying the n rows argument, uh, and then going through each of the um, uh, uh, looping over each of the columns uh, using sapply and calling the class function. So the class function will give you will tell you what class of data is in each column, uh, and then you can use this, and then you can say store this information, and then read uh, the entire data set after by specifying the call classes argument. So the n rows argument. Um, is actually very useful too. It doesn't necessarily make R run any faster, but it does help with memory usage. And so if you can tell R how many rows um, are going to be read into the, to the, into, into R, uh, then it can calculate the memory that's going to be required and not have to kind of figure it out on the go. So even if you mildly overestimate how many rows there are in the data set, that's okay um, uh, because uh, it won't make a difference. It'll still read the correct number of rows. Um, so in general, when you when you're using R with large data sets, and, and there's lots of large data sets out there nowadays, um, it's useful to have a few things, just kind of a few bits of information on hand. So for example, how much memory does your computer have? How much physical RAM is there? These days, most computers will have on the order of a few gigabytes up to many gigabytes of physical RAM. Um, what other applications are in use? So are there other applications that are running on your computer that may be eating up some processor, processor time or memory? Um, if you're on a multi-user system, uh, are there other users logged into the system? Are they using up some of the resources on the computer? Um, what is the operating system for your computer? So is it a Mac? Is it Windows? Is it Unix? Is it Linux? Is it something like that? And then also it's useful to know whether the, the operating system that you're running is 32-bit or 64-bit. On a 64-bit system, uh, uh, there, there you'll generally be able to uh, access more memory if the computer has a lot more memory. So if you want to do a rough calculation before you read in a table into R uh, using the read.table or the read.csv function, uh, you can just do a very quick calculation. So here, suppose I have a data frame here uh, with 1.5 million rows and 120 columns. So this is not a particularly big data set, but it's reasonable. Um, so and suppose that all of the new, all of the columns are numeric. So I don't have to worry about different types of data. They're all all the columns are numeric. Uh, the question is, how much memory is required to store this data frame in memory? 
Okay, so I can do a simple calculation. So the number the number of elements in this data in this data frame is going to be 1.5 million times 120, right? Because it's a square object, uh, and so that's and so that's the number of elements uh, in the data frame. Now, if it's a numeric, uh, if all the data are numeric, then each number requires eight bytes of memory. Uh, to store because the because the numbers are stored using 64-bit numbers and there's eight bits per byte so that's eight bytes of memory per numeric object uh, so that's going to be so here's the number of bytes now um, there's two to the 20 bytes per megabyte um, and so I can divide that the number of bytes by two to the 20 and that's how many megabytes I got so it's got I've got 1,373.29 megabytes uh, and I can divide that again uh, by two to the 10 to get the number of gigabytes, so it's going to be roughly 1.34 gigabytes. So the the raw storage for this data frame uh, is a roughly 1.34 gigabytes. Uh, now you're actually going to need a little bit more memory than that to read the data in because there's a little bit of a overhead required for reading the data in. And so um, and so the rule of thumb uh, is to, is that you're going to need almost twice as much memory to read this data set into R using read.table uh, than the than the object itself requires. So if your computer only has let's say two gigabytes of RAM, and, and you're trying to read in this 1.34 gigabyte table, uh, you might want to think twice about trying to do it because it, you're going to be pushing the boundaries of uh, of memory that that is required to read this data set in. Of course, if your computer has like four or eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM, then you should have no problem uh, in terms of the memory requirements. It will still take some time just to read it in, just because the uh, it, it takes time to read in all the data, but you won't be running out of memory. So doing this kind of calculation is enormously useful when you're reading in large data sets because it can give you a sense of, you know, do I have enough memory? Is the reason if you run into any errors, you'll know whether the error is because of memory running out of memory or not. So I encourage you to do this kind of calculation when you're going to be reading in large data sets and you and you and you know in advance kind of how big it's going to be.